I would now like to invite Tony Lynn Raponi to our virtual stage. Tony Lynn is a graduate of our history department and our communications study, studies program here at York. Currently, she's an associate vice president, corporate and public affairs at TD Bank Group, where she leads a communication team that supports a network of more than 20,000 Canadian personal banking colleagues while elevating TD's brand in our communities. She also leads a team of over 20 translation professionals in Montreal who provide French language content to TD's employees and customers. Tony Lynn has successfully applied strong communication interpersonal and consultative skills to build business and strategy focused roles over her past 15 year career at TD, including as chief of staff to TD's global chief marketing officer, as well as customer experience strategy. She's an active member of Girl Guides Canada and was a participating mentor in York's York University's inaugural year of the Advancing Women program last year. So I don't only welcome Tony Lynn, I welcome Tony Lynn back to our program. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's, um, you know, hearing your, your bio and, and listening to some of the experiences would not have imagined uh, sitting in this chair, um, sharing a lot of, of my own personal experiences with many graduates a couple years later. So thank you very much for the opportunity. So could you tell us a little about your time at York? Tell us about any favorite professors you may have had, any courses, any hangout spots, what was York like for you? So York, uh, for me, it was a great home away from home. So I was uh, a commuter uh, living in North York. So it was actually a very convenient location. Our family moved to Richmond Hill at some point through that journey. Um, I was a rather independent student. So I spent a lot of time in the student center studying um, or, or just reading in the open. Uh, Love to watch people while I worked and uh, just was a, a great environment for me. Uh, I enjoy attending uh, a lot of, of, of my lectures. I have one professor, I can't remember his name, who stood out as just uh, a very interesting guy. Um, but uh, yes, it was it was some time ago. I, I, I'm not sure that he'd be there an, anymore. Um, I love the flexibility and independence. It, it, it afforded me uh, the opportunity to also work part time. Um, while also, you know, lots of time to, to keep my heads in the books. I, as you mentioned in my bio, uh, I did a history degree that really translated into stacks of books on my desk at any given time. Um, so lots, lots of independent work that way. I, I did my first job uh, through university was working at Indigo Books. And then my second job was um, as a teller at TD. So no accident in terms of where I have spent the majority of my career um since that time okay uh thank thank you so i i just um ask you a little bit about the history because i'm also from the history department so let's let's take a little yay yay history journey uh, was there anything that uh, out of that history degree because our our mentees might be surprised to hear history td what happened there could you tell us a little bit about that yeah, for sure. And, you know, it actually um, goes back to something that I say and joke about quite often that I've had jobs at TD, um, you, you've referenced some of them, uh, where I, I say I have no business being there. Um, and it's not true at all. And that's certainly not giving um, myself uh, the credit due in terms of the experiences that I have had and, and the things that I got out of that, uh, you know, the, the practice of history. And, you know, I know how to problem solve. I know how to uh, work in groups and, you know, relationship management and communication and the writing. I didn't actually realize how much of uh, that formed what then later I, I continued into a corporate communication uh, postgraduate program. Um, and just the, the way of 
taking information and um, making quick decisions and, uh, you know, assessing and, and, and making judgment and judgment calls. All of these skills came from, from the study of history and, you know, paired with my part-time work in a, in a, in a, you know, business environment where I learned customer service and, you know, again, interacting with people and dealing with difficult situations uh, that the, the, they were very complementary to, you know, not just the corporate communications uh, experience and where I've spent a good bulk of my career, I have gone on and done things, more businessy things in uh, different parts of TD. And, you know, it is a real pairing of, of those experiences. So absolutely, um, you know, there's a discipline in, in many of the things that you study. The subject matter itself, of course, it's very important. It is also the how of, of, of learning and the way that you need to persuade and influence um, that you, you learn through your, your studies in, 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 in university and history is a really great example of that. Okay, thank you. So for all our history people out there, you, you've heard the lady speak. Okay, uh, so could you tell us a little bit about some of your career highlights since you've left York? We've, we've talked a little, so we've talked about the, the titles, but could you tell us exactly what that means that because the bank can look so mysterious? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's been a ton of, of, of highlights, um, you know, things that I've got to do early in my career, uh, places I've been able to travel as a result of, of some of the, the work that we've done. Uh, you know, for me, though, my career has been very focused around customer experience and colleague experience or employee experience. So how do customers feel about working with TD and can we make that better? And so I've, I've had a lot of different opportunities to do that in, in a variety of ways. And then similarly on the employee side, you know, what makes people excited to come to work? What do they know about the company they work for? What makes them proud? Mm -hmm. And I've been able to influence that in, in a number of ways and a number of roles um, through, through my career. So, um, you know, a, a notable one for me was working with the chief marketing officer. That was cool. And that's the one that, you know, was very humbling to be in a position, um, you know, direct access to a very senior person. Uh, that was a, like I said, just a ton of learning and, you know, every job that I've had has been learning and a, you know, building stone to new opportunities and, and a path that you just can't anticipate, um, when you're, you know, in your third year or fourth year and you, the feeling like there's a clock of a decision that you need to make. Um, there's just so many roads that, that will come, um, you know, progressively year after year as you gain new skills and new experiences. Oh, thank you. And through those experiences and the others you've had in the workplace, what role have networking and mentoring played in your professional life? Um, so mentors, and, and I mean, it comes in, in all shapes and forms. There's people who are in a very established uh, mentor-mentee relationship, which is what we're doing as part of this program. There's also people who just, you've you know, built a trusted relationship with. And I, I see them as really important, influential people in my life and, and, and mentors, even if I never called them that. Um, mm -hmm. They have, you know, you know, like I said, did, you know, built trust. Um, they bring objectivity. They, you know, with that trusted relationship, they can challenge you um, in how you're thinking about something, the way you're thinking about your career or the way you're thinking about a problem that you're experiencing. Um, they can, you know, certainly raise you up as well. They, you know, when I think back to um, someone who's impacted me and influenced me the most, it, it really is the confidence that she helped build in me. Um, and, you know, seeing skills and, and, and valuing those skills more than I ever thought I had the potential for. So um, there really is, you know, an objective view of what you're capable of and, and what you bring and how people see you and, and, and being able to have those relationships and being vulnerable to, to hearing all sides of, of, of feedback and, and perspective from a mentor um, or anyone that you connect with and network with is, is really important. Um, and, and sometimes, and I think this, it, you know, kind of leads to, you know, the experience for mentees here. Um, it might not be in the moment, you might not really have the relatability to the, the advice or the experience your mentor is sharing. But 
you know, months down the road, even years down the road, there might be like a golden nugget there that just kind of pops. Um, and, and I had that experience. I, I, I worked very closely um, with a mentor and um, she was a, a vice president at TD and which is a very senior position. And um, she had shared a, a piece of advice that you need to uh, declare what you want because people will assume she had a, a you know, a senior herself. She had a husband who was quite senior. They had a family. Why would she need to be any more senior than she was? What what were her ambitions? And there were assumptions made that she was probably just happy where she was, and that wasn't the case. And so she had shared that advice with me. And when I had come to, you know, it, it was interesting, um, but I couldn't really relate to it. And you know, a couple, I think it was a year later, I was faced with the opportunity to be uh, the chief of staff or our um, chief marketing officer. And um, people were opting out for me because it was a big job and I was a single mom. And I remembered that piece of advice from my mentor a year prior and it really resonated in that moment. And it gave me a lot of fire uh, to say, no, I can do this. I want to do this. And you know, you leave that with me, <laughs> you don't decide. Yes. Um, and I think that was just a really powerful moment and a really powerful example of how mentors um, really do play a, a role, uh, maybe not in the conversation you have today, but years later. Uh, that is such a, a nugget. Thank you for that. And uh, you were involved in our advancing uh, program last year. And so I can rely on you now to, to, to speak directly to our mentors. How do you think they can most benefit from this opportunity? What, what should they do to reap as much as possible from advancing you? So uh, the first thing is have fun. This is a fantastic opportunity. We had a chance just now to meet with a number of the mentors. Um, I couldn't believe how many are here again. They obviously loved the program and love meeting with all of you and working with, with you. So like enjoy that and enjoy the time to connect with people that you would never have imagined connecting with otherwise. So I think that's really important to, you know, obviously take this very seriously, but also not take it too seriously. Like there's there's an, a good balance there in terms of how to, um, you know, connect and, you know, be vulnerable again, like I had mentioned in terms of my own examples and experience, um, you know, don't hold back for, for you know, the, the questions that you have or, um, you know, enter into some good conversation. Uh, equally important is, you know, think about what you want to get out of, of the next couple of months. Um, you know, think about the topics that you want to raise in the conversation. It, it's not, you know, your mentor telling you and it's a one-way sort of conversation. It absolutely needs to be two-way. And, and to do that, it's, you know, bringing your own points of view and thoughts to the conversation as well. Um, and, and plan ahead. I know that, uh, you know, as you go through the months, like does we book the time, plan it. Um, I, I know a lot of of our of the mentors, you know, in in are fitting you into their workday, and sometimes their workdays and their calendars are very busy with three things kind of at the same time, um, and and they are prioritizing you, but they need to they need the time to be able to do it and make the the time commitment. So plan ahead to be able to do that. Um, I, I think that you will just you know, find it really enjoyable uh, to be able to do that. Okay, thank you so much. So um, it is so important to remember that our mentors are here because they care. They could have been anywhere and they're here because they care. Uh, our mentees have to do their part to reach out, to make sure that they make those connections as well because we're all here to support Thank you so much, uh, Tony Lynn, for those great insights. Thank you for coming back uh, to our program this year. We are so pleased uh, to, to just tell you thank you. No, I, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you.